गुड आफ्टरनून बच्चों कल आपको इलेक्ट्रो फोर्सेस के बारे में पढ़ा रहे थे आज उसी की कंटिन्यू करते हैं आज थोड़ा सा पहले आपको बताएंगे इलेक्ट्रो फोर्सेस प्रोसेस क्या होता है टू इफेक्ट एन इलेक्ट्रोफोरटिक सेपरेशन अ सपोर्ट मटीरियल इज फर्स्ट प्लेस्ड इन टू द इलेक्ट्रोफोरसिस चैम्बर नेक्स्ट द सपोर्ट इज प्लेस्ड इन कॉन्टैक्ट विद बफर प्रीवियसली प्लेस्ड इन टू द इलेक्ट्रोड चैम्बर्स सैंपल इज अप्लाइड ऑन द सपोर्ट एंड इलेक्ट्रोफोरसिस इज कंडक्टेड फॉर अ डिटर्मिंड लेंथ ऑफ टाइम यूजिंग द कॉन्स्टेंट वोल्टेज और कॉन्स्टेंट करेंट द सपोर्ट इज देन रिमूव फ्रॉम द इलेक्ट्रोफोरसिस सेल एंड रैपिडली ड्राइड और प्लेस्ड इन अ फिक्सेटिव टू प्रिवेंट डिफ्यूजन ऑफ द सैंपल कॉम्पोनेंट फाइनली एनालिसिस इज डर्न टू डिटर्मिन वे द सब्सटेंसिस टू बी आइडेंटिफाइड और क्वांटिफाइड आर ऑन द सपोर्ट दिस इज अकम्पलिश्ड बाई मेजरमेंट ऑफ अ फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ अ मॉलिक्यूल और बाई स्टेनिंग द जेल क्वांटिटेशन ऑफ द डाई इन द इंडिविजुअल जोन कैन बी अकम्पलिश्ड by physically examining the gel or more conveniently the direct densitometry the absorbance of each fraction is displayed on a recorder chart as an integrated feed for interpretation the power supplies operate with constant current constant voltage or constant power the use of appropriate power supply depends on the type of electrophoresis and the desired output of separation this is because the flow of the current through a medium that offers electrical resistance is associated with production of heat heat evolved during electrophoresis increases the conductance of the system and decreases the resistance with constant voltage power sources the resultant rise in the current due to an increase in thermal agitation of all dissolved ions causes an increase in both the migration rate of the protein and the rate of ev evaporation of water from the stationary support medium the water loss causes an increase in ion concentration and thus a further decrease in resistance this is a constant voltage source used and the current and therefore the migration rate will progressively increase to minimize these effects the migration rate the migration rate it is best to use a constant current power supply next hum aate hain buffers kya kya use hote hain jo electrophoresis ke khas component hota hai buffers <coughs> the buffer ions have a two fold purpose in electrophoresis inka upyog kya hota hai buffers ka electrophoresis process mein they carry the applied current buffers they carry the applied current and second fix the ph at which the electrophoresis is to be carried out ye ph ko maintain rakhte hain yahi do main purpose hote hain buffer use karne ka ek electrophoresis process mein thus buffers determine the kind of electric charge on the solute the extent of ionization of the solute and therefore the electrode towards which the solute will migrate the buffers ionic strength determines the thickness of the ionic cloud buffer and the non buffer ions surrounding a charged molecule the rate of its migration and the sharpness of the electrophoretic zones <coughs> with increasing concentration of the ions the ionic cloud increases in size and the molecules become more hindered in this movement buffers are used based on their valency and ionic strength as a thumb rule the ionic strength of an electrolyte or a buffer is composed of monovalent ions is equal to its molarity the ionic strength of an electrolyte with one monovalent or one divalent ion is 3 moles per liter and for a doubly divalent electrolyte it is 4 moles per liter many buffer systems have been used in electrophoretic procedures but those most widely used are the barbital buffers and the tris 
boric acid EDTA buffers. Since the base in both of these buffers is monovalent, any association effect between buffer and the protein is minimal. A buffer should be chosen with a pH that will provide the maximum separation without destroying the properties of the sample. Very acidic or basic conditions pose problems for any system. Since an increased fraction of the current is carried by the protons or the hydroxyl ions resulting in poorer separation. Next point, the basic component of the electrophoresis system is the support medium. Various types of support media are used in electrophoresis and the range from solutions such as a sucrose gradient to insoluble gels like sheets, slabs or columns of starch, agarose or polyacrylamide gels or membranes of cellulose acetate. A patli si patti ki roop mein, ek eent ke prakar ek slab ki roop mein, ek chote chote si rekhaon ki roop mein, columns ki roop mein, ye humko milte hai. Functionally, the supporting medium must allow maximum penetration of the material to be separated and yet cut off bulk flow or convection. Most mediums do this by offering a restricted pore size for electrophoretic movement of the macromolecules. Next, the supporting medium should not interact with the molecules since this will inhibit or stop the migration. The usual interaction problem encountered is not the actual adsorption of the material but the effects of the charge groups attached to the medium that result in a phenomenon known as electroosmosis. Electroosmosis is a very general effect. It is more pronounced when charge groups are present in the supporting medium but it always occurs to some extent. Electrophoresis in glass capillary tubes occurs to such an extent that glass capillaries used in electrophoresis are often coated with a cellulose or plastic to reduce this effect, which might otherwise seriously distort the separation pattern. The exception to this requirement of the supporting medium should not interact with the material being separated in the techniques of electroblotting. Finally, the supporting medium should probably provide for molecular sealing. Chalni ke jaisa effect usko provide karna chahiye hamare forces separation ke andar. This kind of supporting medium can filter samples separating proteins on the basis of both size and mobility by enabling separations on the basis of molecular size as well as the molecular charge. The porosity or the average pore size of some mediums is fixed <coughs> but the pore size of other mediums can be controlled. For example, by changing the gel concentrations of starch or agar, one can vary the pore size. If the average pore size is near the average diameter of the macromolecules, that are being electrophorized, the supporting medium will produce molecular saving effects. The molecular saving effects can produce enhanced resolution. The average pore size of polyacrylamide gels casts at about 5 to 10 percent concentrations is comparable to the effective diameters of many globular relatively compact proteins of 15,000 to 250 lakh Daltons. Other types of supporting medium. The supporting mediums can be a solution with density gradient, but in general, insoluble materials are used. <coughs> Some are self-supporting, whereas others are mechanically supported by the apparatus. Supporting mediums can also be classified as particulate or continuous. Particulate mediums can include glass beads, cephadex and cellulose fibers. Continuous supporting mediums may include polyacrylamide, starch and agarose gels. 
जेल्स आर जेली लाइक सॉलिड जैम के जैसे लगते हैं ये सेमी पोरस होते हैं इन विच कंसिडरेबल सॉल्वेंट इज इंक्लूडेड स्टार्च जेल्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल आर मेड फ्रॉम स्टार्च सस्पेंशन दैट आर हीटेड एंड कूल्ड द स्टार्च फाइबर्स इंटरैक्ट टैंगलिंग विथ ईच अदर बट ट्रैपिंग द सॉल्वेंट सो दैट लार्ज गैप्स और पोर्स एग्जिस्ट बिटवीन द फाइबर्स दीज गैप्स और पोर्स आर एवेलेबल फॉर मैक्रोमोलिकुलर मूवमेंट सिमिलर जेल्स कैन बी मेड फ्रॉम एगार एगरोज एंड सम केमिकल पॉलीमर्स जेल्स कैन ऑल्सो बी मेड बाई पॉलीमराइजेशन ऑफ एक्रिलामाइट विद अ स्मॉल परसेंटेज ऑफ बाई फंक्शनल एक्रिलामाइट डेरेवेटिव दैट क्रॉस लिंक्स द एक्रिलामाइट पॉलीमर्स The choice of a supporting medium is based on many considerations. Slabs or sheets, इंट के जैसे आकार वाला या पतली पतली सी चंदर के रूप में Slabs or sheets are useful when one is comparing different samples. And the routine clinical electrophoresis is done using the sheet supports. Gel cylinders are sometimes used in isoelectric focusing. अब हम पेपर का भी इस्तेमाल करते हैं सपोर्टिंग मीडियम के रूप में वो कैसे करते हैं पेपर एंड सेल्यूलोज एसिटेट एंड स्पेशली पेपर इज फेवर्ड फॉर द सेपरेशन ऑफ लो मॉलिकुलर वेट सब्सटेंसेस इन स्पेशलाइज्ड बायोकेमिकल लेबोरेटरीज द मेन एडवांटेजेस ऑफ दीज मटेरियल्स आर देयर थिननेस एंड मैकेनिकल स्ट्रेंथ अ थिनर सपोर्ट मींस ग्रेटर सेंसिटिविटी बिकॉज less material is needed to produce a detectable spot or zone in a thicker support the same amount of sample in a zone would be distinguished in a greater volume and so would be more dilute and hence harder to detect otherwise more samples must be applied cellulose acetate is prepared by treating cellulose with acetic anhydride this puts acetyl groups or the sugar hydroxyl groups the resulting material is pressed into sheets that are somewhat stronger than paper and a good deal more chemically uniform adsorption of materials to the groups in the paper leads to the losses of material and to tailing of the zones patli patli si rekhaein ban jati cellulose acetate is more inert in this respect and because of its uniformity and ease of preparation the strips are merely soaked in electrophoretic buffer so that no air is trapped it is very widely used in routine clinical biochemistry and pathology labs gels can be cast with varying thickness to increase or decrease capacity or the amount of the sample gels also offer the possibility of molecular sieving effects because their porosity can be controlled by changing their composition on the other hand their mechanical strength tends to be low ek aur prakar ka supporting medium hota hai starch or agar gels ka star gels are not extensively used as agaros acrylamide or even cefadex the starch solutions must be heated to 100 degrees celsius then degassed and an awkward process and then cast the starch gels tend to provide greater resolution than agar or agarose does however the inconvenience of preparing starch gels has limited their use <coughs> agar and agarose agar without the agropectin are easier to handle because agarose demonstrates a lower electroosmosis effect and exhibits fewer problems with adsorption it is preferred over agar the pore size of agarose is much greater than that of polyacrylamide this is the reason why agar or agarose is used in most Immunoelectrophoretic techniques. 
Another advantage of agarose is that it may be poured after reheating only to about 50 degrees Celsius. Thus, some proteins such as antibodies can be mixed in without denaturing. Proteins ki denature hone ka khatra kam hota hai, isliye isko hum kafi prefer karte hai. Even so, some disadvantages encountered when preparing starch gels are encountered for a variety of separations available commercially. These gels are used for the separation of isoenzymes, hemoglobins, glycoproteins and so on. Next coming on to another medium that is polyacrylamide gels. Polyacrylamide gels are less frequently used in clinical laboratories but are a common research tool. <coughs> they are clear, fairly easy to prepare and exhibit reasonable mechanical strength over the acrylamide concentrations ranging normally employed for proteins. <coughs> in addition, they show a low endoosmosis effect and have a pore size well suited for the separation of average proteins, the RNA molecules and smaller restriction fragments of the DNA. A major clinical use of polyacrylamide gels is the separation of alkaline phosphatase isoenzymes. However, polyacrylamide gel preparation and casting are somewhat more exacting and time consuming and reproducibility of gel preparation is difficult to achieve. It is now possible to buy commercially prepared polyacrylamide sheets from several firms. Now, lab mein isko banana nahi padta hai. Kuch manufacturers isko commercial par use kar rahe hain aur usko commercially hum purchase kar sakte hain. Cellulose acetate sheets can be purchased in relatively uniform batches so that results of different electrophoresis experiments are more consistent. On the other hand, resolution with cellulose acetate is not as good as with polyacrylamide. 8 or 9 serum protein fractions can be resolved using cellulose acetate, but up to 30 fractions can be detected using this electrophoresis on the polyacrylamide gels. So, cellulose acetate was used because it lends itself to fast, easy, reproducible measurements, though of comparatively low resolution. The availability of commercially agarose gels has greatly helped in providing greater resolution with consistency results. To effect an electrophoretic separation, a hydrated support material such as freshly prepared agarose gel or previously wetted cellulose acetate is first placed into the electrophoresis chamber. Excess buffer is then removed from the support surface by blotting. <coughs> Care should be taken that bubbles must not be present. Next, the support is placed in contact with the buffer previously placed into the electrode chambers. Sample is applied onto the support and electrophoresis connected for a determined length of time using constant voltage or constant current. The support is then removed from the electrophoresis cell and rapidly dried or placed in a fixative to prevent diffusion of small components. It is then treated with a dye fixed reagent to locate and visualize the individual protein zones by staining. After washing out excess dye, the support is dried, agarose or placed in a clearing reagent, cellulose acetate membranes. Agarose gels must be dried in aid of mild heat. No treatment is necessary to retain the transparency. Analysis to determine where the substance is to be identified or quantified are on the support can be accomplished by measurement of a physical property of a molecule such as 
लाइट एब्जॉर्बन और रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स लाइट की रेखा जब उससे पास की गई लाइट बीम तो कितनी मात्रा में लाइट बीम उससे पास हुई और कितनी उसका हिस्सा पास नहीं हुआ है और बाई द यूज ऑफ केमिकल रिएक्शन सचैज स्टेनिंग मेजरमेंट्स ऑफ फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज में लैक स्पेसिफिसिटी सेंसिटिविटी एंड रेजोल्यूशन स्टेनिंग ऑफन अचीव द डिजायर गोल्स ऑफ रेजोल्यूशन सेंसिटिविटी स्पेसिफिसिटी एंड स्पीड मेनी टाइप्स ऑफ स्टेन आर एम्प्लॉयड डिपेंडिंग ऑन द नीड समटाइम्स इट इज डिजायरेबल टू स्टेन एवरीथिंग सच एज ऑल प्रोटीन्स स्टेन एंड स्टेनिंग प्रोसीजर्स कैन बी मेड स्पेसिफिक फॉर वन केमिकल ग्रुप द निन हाइड्रेन स्टेन फॉर अम्यूनो ग्रुप ऑफन यूज आफ्टर पेपर इलेक्ट्रोफोरिस ऑफ द पेप्टाइड्स और द अम्यूनो एसिड्स is an perfect example of this glycoproteins can be treated with per iodic acid and color developed with a dye in the presence of a reducing agent such as sulfite this per iodic acid shift stain or pass stain treatment oxidizes carbohydrate groups to aldehydes which reacts with the dye to form a shift base the amount of dye taken up by the sample is affected by many factors such as type of the protein and the degree of denaturation of the proteins by the fixing agents the stains used to visualize and locate the separated protein fractions differ according to the type of application and personal choice <coughs> commonly used protein stains are amido black nephthol blue black and ponicue s members of the cosmos massive brilliant blue series of the dyes such as cosmos massive brilliant blue r250 are also used silver nitrate or silver dye amine have been used to stain proteins and polypeptides with sensitivity of 10 to 100 folds greater than that of the dyes used for the same purpose once the stain has been introduced usually by soaking the support in a stain solution excess stain must be removed this can be done electrophoretically or most commonly by diffusion electrophoretic removal is fast but can result in distortion of the stained zones jo amino acids ki rekhaye bani hai wo ho sakta hai thodi si distorted ho jaye disrupt ho jaye इसलिए हम ज्यादा प्रेफर करते हैं डिफ्यूजन मेथड को डिफ्यूजन इन्वॉल्व चेंजिंग द सॉल्वेंट और यूजिंग अ डी स्टेनर टू रिमूव द फ्री स्टेन मेनी एंजाइम्स आर आइडेंटिफाइड बाय यूज ऑफ कलर्ड ऑफ सब्सटेंस और प्रोडक्ट्स सच एज जाइमोग्राम्स इवन इन जेल्स और अदर सपोर्ट मीडियम फॉर एग्जाम्पल एल्कलाइन फॉसोटेज हाइड्रोलाइज पैरा nitrophenyl phosphosulfate to para nitrophenol which has a yellow color at a ph 8 soaking a gel in such as a solution produces color bands where the enzymes are now it is customary to report the results obtained by the electrophoretic separation in terms of percentage of each fraction present on in terms of absolute concentration if the total quantity of protein is known quantitation of the dye in the individual zones can conveniently be accomplished by densitometry and instrumental method in which the electrophoretic strip or any other medium is moved past a measuring optical system and the absorbance of each fraction is displayed on a recorder chart the area under each peak is then automatically integrated ye kaam humko manually nahi nahi karna hota hai jo machine mein lagwa microprocessor hota hai wo humko peaks nikal ke de deta hai jisse hum final concentration calculate karke nikal sakte hain the salient features of a densitometer include its ability to scan electrophoresis support lens of about 25 to 150 mm automatic background zeroing for background correction which allows the instrument to choose the lowest point 
in the electrophotogram as baseline so that minor peaks are not lost or cut off. <coughs> An integrating device, a variable wavelength control either as a continuously variable monochromator or as a selectable interference filters which allows operation in 400 to 700 nanometers range. It has a computerized integration and a printout. It has built-in diagnostics for instrument troubleshooting and it has the ability to measure the reflectance mode. Microprocessor containing densitometers automatically computes the electrophotogram zones with great speed and presents the data in both percent and concentration units. <coughs> Densitometer also referred to as flat bed scanner or digital image analyzers are capable of storing and scanning digitalized light intensity readings from large areas. They use ultra sensitive charged CCT devices or cameras or coupled device detectors and have a resolution of up to 1200 dots per inch. Sophisticated data processing software permits manipulation of the stored image information to produce conventional scans with area integration or more complex outputs such as overlaying and subtraction of patterns from two different samples. Some other factors that affect electrophoresis are sample application, current and voltage considerations, separation time, types of electrophoresis and also the types of the support media and buffer. The types of separation also includes moving boundary or free solution. Here as migration occurs over the fastest moving component separates from the sample components and forms a boundary that slowly moves into the buffer at its periphery. This is the first electrophoresis method that was developed. Zone refers to the migration of a charged molecule usually on a porous supporting medium such as cellulose acetate or agar gel. <coughs> Zone electrophoresis differs from the others in that it produces an electrophotogram on the support medium. A display of the component zones each sharply prepared and separated from the neighboring zones. Asani susko hum rekhaon ko aakho ke dwara dek sakte hai. Jo pattern hum ban sakta hai usse hum usko distinctly visualize kar sakte hai. Capillary refers to the use of small bore capillary tubes as the electrophoretic chamber and a soluble gel as the support media. The components migrate out in the sequence as in a moving boundary and are detected by an online detector. There are some types of procedures also that is dimensional 1 and dimensional 2 procedures. Now basically we talk about clinical applications. Ki. The main common uses of electrophoretic techniques in a laboratory today are the following. Number 1. Specific protein electrophoresis. Number 2. Quantitative analysis of specific serum protein classes such as gamma globulins and albumin. Identification and quantitation of hemoglobin and its subclasses. Identification of monoclonal proteins such as Benz Jones proteins, gamma globulins in either serum or urine. <coughs> Separation and quantitation of major lipoprotein classes. For isoenzyme analysis, separation and quantitation of enzymes such as creatine kinase, lactate dehydrogenase and alkaline phosphatase into their respective molecular subtypes. CK, LDH or ALP ke uske subtypes mein distinctly unko distinguish karne mein ye hamari madad karta hai. Immunoelectrophoresis 
most often used to determine qualitatively the elevation or deficiency of specific classes of immunoglobulins and can also be used to semi quantitate the serum proteins such as transferrin and complement components C3 and C4. All the procedures involve measurements of alterations in an electrophoretic pattern compared with a normal control. One can often use these to diagnose specific diseases, nephrotic syndromes for example, and may be accomplished by a decrease of more than 25% in alpha 2 globulin levels, with a decrease of about 25% in gamma globulin levels because of the low molecular weight proteins in the urine. The pattern of decrease or increase in several disease conditions is fairly characteristic and hence quantitation of stain strips is useful in the diagnosis. Routine clinical electrophoresis such as blood serum samples can be done by use of highly automated instruments. Now we talk about analyzers. Ke bare mein. Analyzers are dry chemistry analyzer. Eastman Kodak company introduced dry chemistry analyzers which do not use wet chemicals but the chemicals are incorporated into a series of thin films or a single use slide. The patient samples are permeated through the various layers on the slide and the end results are determined colorimetrically. Most of the biochemical tests can be performed including the electrolyte by using a ion selective method incorporated into the slides. Puri tane se dry based test hota hai, isme chromatography ka bhi use hota hai isme. The Kodak Cam 400 analyzer, ek prakar ka SME auto analyzer hai, jo ki dry chemistry analyzer padati par based hai. The Kodak Cam 400 performs both colorimetric and photometric reactions at the same time. Dono hi prakar ke endpoint reactions ya Colorimetric reactions hum is par kar sakte hain. Each test reaction takes place entirely within the slide so that the sample carryover on the slides is miniaturized so that they require less space. Manolo ki apeshakrat yahan par dry test hota hai is liye biohazardous chalkao ka bhi khatra kam rehta hai unko. To operate the analyzers all one has to do is it to load it with slight cartridges, sample cups containing the patient fluids. By pushing a button or the program selected and it is followed in the sequence of a display panel. Another type is the dimensional RXL clinical chemistry system. It is a discrete random access analyzer. It uses the date flex multiple test reagent cartridges. Vessels from the feedback are moved into the incubation wheels at the vessel transfer station. The vessel transfer station includes a transfer shuttle and a feedback arrangement. The vessel transfer shuttle operates inside this vessel transfer station area to move the vessels to and from the incubation wheel and to load or unload the vessels to the wash wheel. A chemistry wash is used to wash the reacted solid fits chromium dioxide free from unbound sample and uncharged reagents in the wash station. Different solutions are used to clean the sample probe and the reagent probe. The probe cleaner contains sodium hypochlorite while the reagent probe cleaner contains sodium hydroxide. The heterogeneous immunoassay module provides processing of high sensitivity chromium based heterogeneous assay. The immune assay testing requires multiple washing and incubation steps in order to gain the sensitivity and the specificity required for these methods. Following steps are performed by the heterogeneous module. An immune reaction in which the analyte is bound to a solid phase and tagged with an enzyme. Separation and washing of the bound analyte to remove 
any unbound sample and the reactants. Measuring of the bound analyte via the enzyme tag. In the vessel transfer station, the vessels move them into an incubation wheel. The incubation wheel contains about 45 positions and is situated to allow the vessels to be presented to multiple locations for loading and unloading the samples, addition or reagent, addition of chrome is added to the reaction vessel which first allows the sample depending upon its particular HM method and now conjugate is added. The vessels are maintained at constant temperature inside a thermally coated ring of the incubation wheel as a sandwich of chrome conjugate and the analyte takes place. There are two mix stations also and one transfer station inside the analyzer. The individual panel tests of batch determinations are automatically performed for up to 40 samples with up to 20 analytes per sample. The operator is prompted through the programming procedure by messages present on the cathode ray tube or the monitor of the machine. The samples are automatically diluted and delivered to the reaction flow cells along with other reaction constituents. The deflometer derives the final result in concentration units which are printed on the system printer and stored in the computer memory. All tests requested for each sample are completed including out of range and the antigen access check before printing the next sample. Eight prakar ka analyzer wo hota hai centrifugal analyzers. They are featured as having the advantages of low maintenance with low sample and reagent consumption with low cost per test ratio. In a centrifugal analyzer, the samples are located along with the reagents in the transfer disk. The transfer disk is installed in the rotor assembly. The appropriate program cartridge is inserted into the tape reader. The tape reader reads the test program and the test parameters into the computer. A computer operator dialog then occurs and at the conclusion of which the computer initiates the reaction run. Upon the computer command, the rotor is accelerated causing each sample and its respective reagent to be transferred by centrifugal force into the reaction cuvette. After the rotor reaches a running speed, a vacuum is applied on the cuvettes to facilitate mixing. A light beam then passes through each cuvette and the filtered light beam is detected and statistical calculations of the cuvette absorbances are monitored, calculated and sent to the printer by the computer. The common prakar ka analyzer paaya jata hai, usko kehte hai Automated System Centrifugal Analyzer ASCA. The automated system centrifugal analyzer loads samples, controls and the calibrators into 40 positions reusable rotor. The rotor is displaced in the analyzer. The ASCA loader delivers serum and reagents up to 32 in number automatically in the testing sequence according to the computer autoloader program. The autoloader computer program organizes test sequences for about 48 patient serums or controls in the complete rotor loading and then is accomplished within 10 minutes. Random access capabilities allow for multiple tests of one or more patients simultaneously in a profile or batch mode. The testing methodology includes endpoint enzyme immunoassay, bichromatic or multichromatic readings. The sequences are continuously monitored, assuring accuracy of the test results. The ASCA system analyzer automatically gathers all patient information and the results are presented in a total lab report format. A powerful IBM XT hard disk computer runs the random access chemistry system of this ASCA analyzer. The ASCA CPU system clearly flags 
the abnormal area for science for the physician. Extensive quality control data and functions have been designed in the operations of ASCA. Quality control reports include the statistics and the Levy Jennings charts available for screen reading or for printout with mean and standard deviation and CV. These reports fully document with the accuracy and precision of the test results. Thank you, Bachchu.